This is the Keter High Store. This is an ideal storage solution for outside, especially if you don't have a lot of room at your property. One thing that I really must stress is that you do need a piece of level ground to put this on. If your ground is not 100% level, you will have real problems trying to assemble this unit. I would also recommend that it is anchored down to the ground, although I've not done that yet on this particular model. So as you can see, there's plenty of room in the Keter High Store and you can get quite high objects in it. You can of course put two extra shelves in there should you wish to do so and all the fixings and screws are supplied for doing that although you will need to buy the shelves. To test out how waterproof the high store is I've actually filled it with cardboard and as you can see the cardboard is completely dry. That has been in there for approximately two weeks and it has rained virtually every day. So this is a perfect solution if you need some extra storage space outside. This does actually come as a flat pack, so you do actually have to do some assembly work and the carton actually weighs about 49 kilograms. The unit is fairly secure and it does have a shoot bolt that shoots out at the top and the bottom and then that can be secured via the handle using a padlock. As you can see I've placed a few items in there and there's absolutely loads of room. It really is a useful storage solution. You will notice that the doors open extremely widely on the high store and that does make it very easy to put items in and out of it. So that's the review part of the video over. I'm now going to show you exactly how to assemble this unit. It does say in the instructions that you need two people to assemble this but I am actually going to do it on my own. This is fairly easy to assemble. The top and the bottom are actually identical. So the first thing we need to do is find a piece of level ground. That is where we're going to assemble the high store. All of the side panels are all identical. So there's four of those, two for the back and one for each side. We've then got the two doors, which are easily identifiable because they have the holes in for the handles. And then we've got all the other components just there, which we have removed from the larger box. So we're now going to start to assemble this. Hopefully it'll only take a couple of hours. It's a good idea to put everything down on a high surface such as this temporary table. That means that you're not bending down, breaking your back when you're actually building it. I've actually separated the two packs of screws. You can see that we've got two different types and you are going to need a good fitting screwdriver bit for those. You are of course going to need the instructions unless you're watching this video. Hopefully this video will make the job a lot easier. You can quite easily remove these plastic bits that are on there from when it's been made simply by pulling them off. I'm not going to wire the base down so that it's flat. And it is important to choose the lowest torque setting on the drill when you do this. You will also notice that the right hand side there overlaps the left hand side. This is the SLPC and there's actually four of these and these are all identical and obviously it will only go in one way. So this is now the front right hand side of the high store. Now we're going to insert the first panel. The first panel goes around with the tongue part on the left hand side. So that will insert that way around. So that that is on the inside, the panel part is on the outside. So now we're going to insert the next upright. Obviously we need it with the tongue on the left hand side again. That will then slot into the grooved part. We're now left with a groove on that upright and obviously we need a tongue to insert into that. 
obviously to get these in the wrong way it's not going to go to together properly so it is important that you get them the correct way around. We now need to insert this part which is the SLPB and that actually goes in with the thick side pointing outwards. We can now take another side panel, obviously we need to ensure that we've got a groove on that side because that will meet up with the piece that we've just inserted. Then need another corner piece. Then the final side panel. Now we are looking for a groove as we're matching up with a tongue. And finally we can insert the final corner piece. Now we're going to assemble the roof. This is pretty much the same as assembling the base. So we're going to take the left hand side piece that goes on there. And then the right hand side piece clips over the top of that. And then screw that down again using the flat headed screws. We then need the metal rail, which is the SLMR. That then goes in there and it's fixed again using the flat head screws. We then need to take the SLPV which is this part and this is pushed in at the front and we need to count three holes from the front that's three of the square holes so it's one two three and then it actually goes in that way around so that the solid part of the channel there is facing inwards and that simply slots into there we now need to repeat that at the opposite side. Again, we go three holes in and insert it in the exact same way so that the flat side is facing inwards. I'm now going to put the roof on. You should really have two people when you do this, but unfortunately I haven't got anybody that can help me today, so I'm going to do it on my own. We now need to get the pad head screws like that. I've now increased the torque on the drill to about eight and I'm going to proceed to screw in all of these screws. When I do this I'm actually pulling down on the roof so that it is in the correct position. If you do have two people doing this you can have one person 
applying some weight onto the roof whilst you put the screws in. We now need to put the screws in these pieces. To do that we need to ensure that that is at 90 degrees to the board. And then we simply need to insert the screws where they are marked. We do have a small pre-drilled hole. Can now go around the base and fit the eight screws into the base. Now put both of the doors down on a flat surface and they are in the exact orientation as they have them in the instructions. On the inside of these pieces we actually have the lettering which you can just see there that is the SLCA so that goes on there and at the opposite end goes the SLCB and then there we have the SLCB and at the opposite end we have the SLCA to put these on it's very simple you simply need to get that Put it in the correct position like so and push it all the way on. Once it's on there like that, we can then insert the screws. And again we're using the panade screws. We now need to assemble the hinges and these come with these plastic covers like so. So that actually needs to go on there. You'll see that it has got locating holes on one end and they locate over those lugs like so. Once that's in there you then screw that in using the screws provided which are very small ones. These are actually in the same packet as the hinges. So we need to do that on all six of these. Now we need to install the hinges. To do that we need to fold them back on themselves, like so. And then that tab there fits inside of that slot and then we have two locating 
pins which go into the two holes. Once that's in the correct position like so you can then screw that in using the four screws which are that type again with the pan head. Just push the first door into position and then show that it is on the two raised parts. This is where you really need two people. I'm going to hold the door from the outside and I'm going to reach in and I'm going to put in the two screws on the inside. So I'm going to ensure the door is in the correct position and I'm going to put two of the screws into the how to two holes there on all three hinges. I just need to repeat that on the other two hinges. We can then open the door before we insert the other two screws. We now need to repeat that on the other two hinges. On the right hand door we now need to install this steel lip. You'll see that it has some cutouts at the top. They need to go behind the plastic that we've already installed on the door. So we need to ensure that that goes on the inside. And that is fixed in position using five of the panhead screws. Now we need to fit the SLMS onto the left hand door. To do that we need to open it. It then needs to slide in at the top and the bottom. Like so. We then need to screw that into position using the pan head screws again. We're now going to fit the lock to the left hand side of the door. That goes against the door, that cover plate goes over it like so. And then from the back we take that part, place that on there and then we insert one of the flathead screws.
The handle is then assembled as follows. Take that part, the FNH7, insert that into there. And then we use two of the flat headed screws. And we simply screw those two pieces together. Just need to increase the torque for that. Obviously you need to make sure the handle is the correct way up. That actually locks that way onto the left hand door. So unlike a normal door handle, it needs to go in that way around. You can then push that plate on. We'll just check that that works. And finally we just need to screw in the chute bolts. These locate in the hole at the bottom there and then are screwed to the inside of the lock. We now just need to repeat that for the top one. So we're going through the hole at the top there. Then we can locate that in position. Then we can tighten that screw. We've then got a very useful outdoor storage solution that should never need painting because it's made from Duotech. But you can of course paint the panels should you wish to do so. So that's the key to high store. It really is a fantastic piece of kit. It is very useful for storing items outside. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel.